Um, here's just a little bit about us. I'm a senior engineer at Microsoft uh, working on service mesh things, uh, but I like to do anything distributed systems or Kubernetes, which is how I got involved here. I am an MLOps engineer at Maven Code. I'm the co-founder, so we do a lot of um, uh, machine learning deployments on cloud native, with cloud native uh, platforms, so we do a lot of work on Kubernetes. Uh, so we're gonna run through these four pretty quick points today as it is a lightning talk, and uh, hopefully by the end of it, you'll want to come and help us make Kubeflow Metal better. Yep. So gonna start by answering the elephant in the room. What is Kubeflow Metal? Uh, so Kubeflow Metal is a new way, I guess new, uh, of, de of deploying Kubeflow onto a Kubernetes cluster on bare metal servers. Uh, so what it is, it's a Terraform module uh, that is composed with a couple other Terraform modules uh, that will spin up an, a Kubernetes cluster on Equinix Metal, and it will deploy Kubeflow on it based on the, um, the manifest. Uh, this creation, like I said, is on bare metal clusters, so it doesn't have the bells and whistles of a cloud provider, uh, so you've got a little bit more control. Uh, we use KubeVip as the bare metal load balancer for the uh, for your cluster, so when you create a, your Istio Ingress Gateway, it's going to be powered by a KubeVip in the background. Um, and it's And we actually, in the future, hope to have ways to um, bring your own cluster where um, we just assume that you have load balancing provision there. Um, we're also looking into uh, independent versioning of those components. Yes, yeah, so this is, on a high level, this is how the architecture looks. Um, what we've done is basically replace the underlying managed infrastructure that you normally get uh, from AWS, Azure, or, or, or Google. So with that, we can just provision, uh, with, with the aid of Terraform, we can provision the underlying infrastructure and you have your Kubernetes environment similar to what you have in the cloud environment. So um, everything is managed by Terraform. So if you can write Terraform scripts, you can easily pro uh, create a provider uh, to target whatever bare metal box you want to access. Uh, we have load balances implemented uh, for you. Uh, we could be at VIP. It's easy to configure and provision. And the cool thing about this is like uh, it's a cheaper alternative to cloud infrastructure where you can basically have a fixed cost rather than something that just runs uh, as people use the underlying infrastructure. So this is a kind of a high level view of the components of Kubeflow Meta, what you get when you run um, a Terraform apply. Um, like we've mentioned, the underlying uh, infrastructure here is going to be Equinix Metal Servers at this time. Uh, we're looking into maybe adding different kinds of providers uh, like Linode or DigitalOcean into the future. Um, and then, of course, we use Terraform to manage those boxes. Um, Kubadium is the process for actually installing Kubernetes on top of that, um, on top of that cluster. And the good folks of, at Equinix have already put a Terraform module together to do a lot of that stuff. Uh, so shout out to them for helping us do this. Um, for PVCs that you often use for Kubeflow, um, what we've done is we use something called the local path PVC provisioner. And what that will do is in, instead of having to set up a secondary like storage uh, component of your Equinix cloud installation, uh, we'll just use the, the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster in order to provide you PVC storage. Uh, there's a plugin out there that, that, that does that. Um, and we use that for just a really simple experience, especially if it's just CI, CD, or just testing. Uh, it's really quick uh, and less hassle to have to deal with. Now, of course, on top of that, you've got Kubeflow. Uh, these are the different pieces of Kubeflow that we install by default, but we hope to add more, uh, more plugs for folks to, to modify uh, and, and add other things. Um, so this is the installation step. It's pretty easy. So uh, we have a demo, re uh, demo repo in the uh, main repository, Qflow on-prem. So you can go in, git clone the repo, uh, configure all the environment variables, and uh, you can run the cubes, uh, the uh, Terraform apply. It runs all the scripts, and you validate that all your packages are installed. Uh, we've got a video here uh, because I was now nowhere near brave enough to try to demo this live. <laughs> um, uh, and we've also sped it up a bit. Um, so this is the what the process looks like. If you're familiar with Terraform, this looks familiar. Um, 
from the beginning, like a complete install, it's gonna be 602 different Terraform resources, including your cluster, including all the different um, Kubernetes manifests that you're applying uh, to your cluster. We sped this up uh, because uh, the process here running on my box takes about 18 minutes or so. Uh, so you throw more compute behind that, you're gonna see that time increase. And it also takes around the same time, a little bit faster, um, i say maybe about half the time actually, to tear it down. So in your head, start imagining some of the CI, CD use cases, the elasticity of um, being able to tear a cluster up with Kubeflow and tear it right back down to validate some experiment or to validate um, a version of Kubeflow even. Uh, there are lots of applications for this. And yeah, this finished around about 52 seconds uh, real time, it's about 18 minutes. And this is what it looks like. This is the familiar Kubeflow dashboard um, where you can click through. Uh, you, you're gonna have a, like I said, a Kubernetes ingress gateway or an Istio ingress gateway with an IP address. Um, we configured it to be a load balancer IP. So there's gonna be a load balancer IP address for um, your Kubeflow installation. You can put that behind a, uh, behind a DNS A record or whatever else and be able to access uh, the dashboard that we, you, know, you all know and love. Why you should consider Kubeflow Metal? Yeah, so uh, the number one benefit is a fixed cost. If you're still experimenting with AI and ML and you're not fully, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money in the cloud, you can just gang up some bucks, uh, servers in your office, and just uh, try, to, uh, try to install Kubeflow Metal on it. The other advantage that we see a lot from running this is like you can quickly bootstrap um, an ML environment or infrastructure for your team. So if you're still doing stuff and you're new to this, uh, you can bring up a you can quickly bring up the environment and use it. The other cool thing is the deployment is very elastic. So you can easily um, add 10 nodes, scale it down, destroy it and make it 20 nodes and things like that while you're testing. Uh, the other part of it that is gonna be really interesting is like plugging it into your CI CD process. So you can have a CI CD process that basically brings up all the clusters you need. And you can provision from a GUI where you can specify the type of parameters and all the things you need to provision the Terraform infrastructure. So uh, that's something we're really working on right now. Um, and there's some special use cases where you don't want your data to touch the cloud. Uh, things like uh, in, in financial data, insurance data that you don't want to move to the cloud, you can easily run it on Qflow Matter in-house. And IoT devices, uh, if you're doing federated learning, you have a lot of IoT devices in the field and you don't want to, you want to quickly uh, build models to do, do inference and things like that. Um, you might want to consider uh, Kubeflow Matter. Yeah, so um, we are looking for more people to, to make this better. Uh, I think the, the current version on GitHub is 010 release candidate two. Yep. So we're very uh, early, but the cool thing about open source is you can just share it with people uh, and just talk about something cool that you've done. So on our roadmap, we want to expose more knobs in the configuration, uh, change the default password, all these um, things to take it to the next level and make it a lot more feasible for folks to put into production. Um, yeah, and currently right now we're, uh, we've uh, demonstrated this proof of value with Equinix, so we're, we're gonna extend it beyond just that and have other providers for bare metal boxes, so things like Linode, uh, DigitalOcean, and if you have any uh, infrastructure on-prem, we might be able to build a provider for that as well. So we're basically uh, looking for people to help us uh, with these efforts. So if you're working on DigitalOcean and you wanna uh, work on the Terraform providers for that, we can uh, use some help in that place. Yeah, and you know, wrapping up here, we wanna go ahead and you know, contribute some of the change, you have to change some of the manifests for Kubeflow, uh, to make them technically more correct for Kubernetes and uh, allow for, for example, changing the load balancer service. And so we want to upstream some of those changes to the Kubeflow Manifest uh, working group slash SIG so that you know it's democratized and available for everybody. Um, and then other things like wiki updates and stuff yeah. like that. And um, basically integrating with CI CD, uh, we're working on that right now so that we can do GitOps provisioning and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you all.